Hey everyone. It's time to build another QRP rig. I've been sketching and trying to come up with a concept. So I'm thinking about something that is obviously QRP, say three to five watts. Small, simple, not digital, that is no microcontroller, and with fixed transmit and receive frequencies. I guess that's a pixie or something that's pixie-like. Not the transceiver that you'd take as your main rig for an activation. Maybe something that you might have in your pack as a backup. I was looking through the junk box and I found this old board. I was going to make a simple transceiver, but it was going to be tunable. I never got it finished, but I kept this board intact. It's most of what you need for a receiver. There's a 40 meter bandpass filter there. And my plan was to put a 20 meter bandpass filter on these pads here so that I could switch between the two bands. I did experiment with a direct conversion mixer there, but it didn't work very well. I wasn't really happy with it. I did get the audio part of this receiver working though. This was a dual op amp, just a preamp and an active filter and a TDA 2003 power amp. It's a tiny bit bigger than I'd probably choose to use, but there's too much work gone into this little board to not do something with it. Two and a half inches, six and a half centimetres. By three and a quarter inches, eight centimetres. So I did what I always do when I start a new project. Look for prior art. Look at the classics. And if I want to use a crystal oscillator, then something like a basic culprit circuit would be a good choice. If it's going to be a CW transceiver, then you'll need a DC offset and a small amount of capacitance in, in uh, parallel with the crystal to pull it lower by about 700 hertz on transmit. And if it's going to cover two bands, you could switch the crystal, this whole section here, but that quickly gets difficult. A lot of designers just prefer to make a second oscillator and just switch power between the two. And that has the advantage that you can separately frequency trim the crystal and also the CW offset. If you were building a CW transmitter or transceiver with an Arduino that's running software, then 
you've got the great advantage that you can do all of the controls, the transmit receive switching, and even the CW generation in software. But if I'm reverting back to a crystal oscillator, no microcontroller, SI5351, then you have to come up with ways of sequencing between transmit and receive. Lots of ideas here. And here. This circuit looks useful. It's a crystal oscillator and a buffer which is keyed. There's the key there. But it also has a second DC switch activated by the key line which has a longer dropout delay. So that can be used to apply 12 volts power to the transmitter. For instance, the receive transmit relays. So I've copied this circuit from EI9GQ, and that's it here. The switching transistors and the keyed buffer. How much RF power do you really need? Well, I found with this little rig, I've had no problems on 20 meters with two and a half watts. And my recent acquisition of a QRP Classic, the Heathkit HW8, has reminded me of just how far you can go with one and a half watts. So I've had a think about IRF 510s and drivers and RD16 HHF1s and push-pull arrangements. But the more I look, the more I see people using this arrangement of three BS-170s. This is used in a number of the KD-1JV rigs and also in the QRP Labs QCX. The three parallel FETs are driven by a high-speed logic gate and then switched through low-pass filters. Both of those uh, designs from Han Summers and also from Steve Weber include a series FET for switching signal between transmit and receive. So I've copied that in. The receive side of that series switch is just a regular bandpass filter of some description. So this arrangement here is normally used with an SI5351 clock, which is typically about three volt, well, up to three volts peak. According to EI9GQ, I'm going to get about 200 milliwatts out of this keyed driver. So I'm going to have to add an additional gain stage, maybe a 2N2222, a broadbanded gain stage there, to get this up to, say, plus 12 to plus 15 dBm. We're going to need enough signal here to open these gates. In the QCX and other similar designs, the 12 volts power is only applied to the FETs of the, these BS-170s during transmit. This circuit from EI9GQ gives us a plus 12 volt line on transmit. And if we make that transistor a BD-140, which is capable of switching a good amp and a half, that should be stiff enough for the DC supply to 5 watt PA. So the only thing left now is the receiver. So the options here are to use a diode ring mixer, an SBL1 or JMS1, ADE1, or use an SA612 Gilbert cell. A lot of these simple designs use 612s, and I see no reason not to do that. A diode ring mixer would give better dynamic range and possibly be lower in noise. And the penalty for using a diode ring mixer is that you have to drive its local oscillator port quite hard, so I would need to install another buffer. Whereas with the SA612, 100 or 200 millivolts should be enough. The balanced output from the SA612 in this design that I've copied from Dave Benson, K1SWL, from his Hilltopper 40 design, goes into the conventional dual op-amp. Typically the first op-amp is a gain stage and the second op-amp is an active filter. 
set up for CW bandwidth. And then you might come out to a headphone port or to an LM386. But if I use this little board, none of this really matters. So all that will be necessary is to build up an SA612 mixer on this portion of the board. Thanks for watching this first part of a QRP transmitter build project. In part two, we'll get this receiver board working. And in part three, a complete board to go over the top of this will be built for the rest of the transceiver. I hope you keep watching. Please subscribe. See you next time.